backend technologies. What is the idea behind a backend layer? In a backend layer, you are exposing your business services and also deal with the storage and retrieval of information in a secure way. Uh, we have chosen using Spring uh, framework as well as other tools like Spring Boot, Spring Data, and Spring Security to accelerate the construction of your backend layer. Spring is a very popular framework using in many organizations. Together with my colleagues uh, of the Web Frameworks course, we selected the material to be used as a basis uh, for our classes. The first course is about creating RESTful services and Spring, and the second one teaches you how to use JPA. JPA is a framework used to retrieve and store objects using a data source like a relational database. This tutorial is using Eclipse, uh, which is, yeah, it's a great IDE, uh, but we normally use IntelliJ in our classes, and we recommend you to continue using IntelliJ. The difference between these tools are uh, very basic, normally shortcuts or import options and etc. but in essence, they are very similar. Uh, the following minutes, I will show you how to create a Spring Boot application from scratch using IntelliJ. Basically, we have two ways of doing that. The first one is by accessing the startspring.io website and downloading a zip file and importing to your IDE. And the other way is also common in other IDEs is using the embedded start spring IO. So it's giving uh, basically the same outcome. Let's start with the web page. So I'm gonna access start.spring.io. As you can see, you need to specify here some metadata about your project. And whenever you hit the generate button, a zip file will be downloaded to your machine. Uh, so I'm gonna select a Maven project. We are using Java version 2.2.0, and I'm gonna specify my uh, metadata. So my group will be nlhavia.se, and the artifact will be example-app. Uh, you can easily uh, create a web application just by selecting the Spring Web Starter X. I'm gonna just generate this project as is, and then you can see that a zip file has been downloaded. I'm gonna expand this zip file and show you what is the structure of this typical file. There is a POM file and the traditional source main Java and source test Java folders. If you want to open this project, you just select the folder you have extracted and for convenience, select the POM XML file, the project descriptor. You open as a project. It might take a little bit longer if it is the first time you are opening this application. In my case, it was quite quick because I have already uh, the majority of libraries in my repository. Here, if you open the POM XML file, you see the dependency I have selected called Spring Boot Starter Web. This is the bootstrap class of your Spring Boot application. I'm gonna just run it and you can follow the steps that are taken via the console. You can see here the logs, uh, some splash screen of your Spring uh, uh, Boot version 2.2.0, and also, uh, is it possible to see that Tomcat has been started in port 8080? This is a very interesting aspect of a Spring Boot application. You can embed uh, Tomcat server in your project just by using a web starter. And if you open the browser and point into localhost 8080, you see that the server is up. And the second way of creating a Spring Boot project is just by hitting the Create New Project and specifying the Spring Initializer. Um, as you can see, it is already embedded, the integration with the Start Spring IO. And you can specify the project metadata the same way you do in a website. And also you can select your dependencies or starters. So this is the second uh, way of uh, creating a Spring Boot project using IntelliJ. Thank you.